survive in advance. The Buffalo Bills make it out of the Week 17 matchup with the New England Patriots, 27 to 21. You are now listening to the Watering Buffalo podcast with your hosts, Justin Goddard and Andrew Chang. Bills Mafia, welcome into another episode of the Wandering Buffalo podcast, our first one of 2024. Happy New Year's, everybody out there. Um, The show is a show brought to you by Buffalo Fanbase um, and also 26 shirts, um, great shirts, great causes in the community. Um, Make sure you're checking them out. We're here tonight talking about this week 17 matchup against the New England Patriots and in true buffalo bills fashion you know they wanted us to have a nice relaxing new year's they made it a nice breezy game to get through right (laughs) um so obviously not exactly how we'd want this game to look and the most important thing here is is we do come out with the win so i want to talk a little bit first about things i liked, things i didn't like um and then after the break we're going to talk about what the rest of the season looks like um so as i'm watching this game i i kind of have like two two conflicting school of thoughts in my head and and one side of me is it's kind of just like survive in advance mentality like we're already in the playoffs don't want to apologize for wins no matter what they look like uh get it done, move on to the next week. Um, And then the other side of me is kind of, well, if we're going to look like this against the Patriots, like how much noise would we really make in the playoffs anyways? Um, Granted, those those tough, hard-fought games, the the playoffs look more like that oftentimes. Um, Sometimes games like this are a better indicator of playoff success. Um... But it would have been really nice to come into a game against a division rival playing for nothing. They beat you earlier in the season. Uh, You've put yourself in just this shit situation that it's basically must win games right now. Uh, They've moved on from Mac Jones on to Bailey Zappi. It would have been real nice to come in, kick them in the teeth, you know, be up 28-7 or something and have your starters getting a little a little rest in the fourth quarter as we head into the next must win game and hopefully into the playoffs um so th- some things i liked from this game um got to start off right at the top Russell Douglas man was playing absolutely insane um not that there's a ton of trade deadline trades in the nfl like the nba goes crazy with it um by far the best deadline acquisition of my lifetime at least um somebody might have to help me out with like the the pre-90s but it's got to be up there with one of the best acquisitions for this franchise at the deadline all time um since the trade deadline he leads the league in takeaways right now um the interception that Ed Oliver got was caused by him. Obviously, the pick six. Just an absolutely crazy game and kind of like single-handedly gave the Bills a chance to win this game. Uh, granted, the offense didn't do much with these opportunities, but we'll get to that. Um, another thing I liked, led by Ed Oliver, but great seeing Daquan Jones back there. Um, defensive line in general, I thought was pretty active today. They end up with three sacks on, um, Bailey Zappi. And it felt like they were in the backfield quite a bit during, during the game. Um, limited their rushing attack from Zeke Elliott, 14 carries for 39 yards. Um, just all around, we've seen some inconsistency with the defensive line. Um, getting Daquan Jones back was was huge, um, and I I love seeing that he didn't really have like a crazy pitch count on him. He was just pretty much looked like normal out there. Um, so good to see. 
Um, glad to have Epinesa back out there and something that didn't have to do with the actual playing of the game at all. I was glad to see Von Miller be a healthy scratch. Um, sure, hope he can, you know, if he's going to be out there, hope he has the form of, of what he had, you know, before the injury. But we haven't seen any of that this year. And, you know, it felt like he was starting to come into form a little bit. But at this rate, I still had him as, like, maybe at best, like, the fourth best defensive end on this team. Probably the fifth. I, I've i seen some splashes from Kingsley Jonathan. I, I just haven't really seen anything from Vaughn this year. So... You know, it's it's an older player coming back from a bad injury. It doesn't mean that this contract is, you know, fully awash and you know <laughs> we're taking a real bath for the next couple of years. Um, you know, he could be coming back into form twenty twenty four, maybe. I don't know. We'll have to see because we're not getting out of the contract very easy. Um But if he's not if he's not gonna be that dude in uh twenty twenty three. He, he just can't be he just can't be out there um plain and simple um other things i liked uh just the defense in general as a whole gets some huge kudos here um benford had some plays back there it was great having uh micah hyde and jordan poyer together um just all around this is the kind of defensive performance that we've kind of gotten used to over the years and we've had kind of that built-in excuse of the injuries for the defense all year and you know it's getting health they're getting healthy there's no more there's no more you know answers for anything um i mean holding the patriots to 21 yeah it's not a good offense um our offense was also giving them the ball back quite a bit um so yeah um and other thing that i did really like and something that you really hope that you're not talking about very much in week 17 um when your team is playing what a four win new england team uh sam martin uh he had some weird lull in the middle of the season there he had a few games where he was pretty terrible um he was an elite punter in this game um pretty sure every punt he had was inside the 10 like a couple of them inside the five you'd really hope that your offense is doing more and we're not seeing this much of sam martin uh, but when he was out there he was absolutely killing it um moving on to things that i didn't like because honestly the Defense was tremendous today, and like almost everything I liked is on that side of the ball. Um, the offensive side of the ball, I, I really struggle with here, and this is where I have like the um, surviving, surviving advanced mentality. That's like got to keep me afloat. But does anybody feel good about this offense going into the going into this stretch run here, like? Last game of the season, playoffs. I mean, it's... Josh Allen hasn't been very good recently. And there have been some weeks where, you know, the rushing attack was really popping off. And, you know, he was able to have, you know, 100 yards passing and win a game. Um, I don't know. It's There's something off with him. And I don't know. It, it looked like bad decision making um i mean i think it started up front the offensive line wasn't uh very good in pass protection today offensive line wasn't very good opening holes in the run game i didn't really expect to do much on the ground in this game i mean that patriots defense is a good defense uh, particularly um their defensive line you know there's some dudes over there and they've been the one of the best rushing defenses all year. So, you know, for what it's worth, I didn't expect crazy things there. Uh, 
but I did expect them to be able to get some things done in the passing game. Um, so Josh Allen ends up 15 of 30. Um, no passing touchdowns and interception. Um, Allen did have two rushing touchdowns, you know, some whatever they're calling it, the snowplow, whatever. Uh, I don't know. To me, in in these marquee games, you know, pretty much the season being on the line, you want your franchise quarterback making $40 million a year to, you know, really be what brings everybody up and, and makes this like, no question, like, we got to have this game. We're putting these fools to rest. And it just wasn't that game for Allen. And honestly, like, this was this was a game where he was like a really good running back that threw the ball once in a while. Um, so, you know, I think this is uh, it's kind of one of the things where when the passing game is going great, Allen's going to get, you know, the praise right off the top. He's going to get the most praise, all that, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I'm not saying this is, a, you know, a binary. Josh Allen is the only issue. It's never one thing. Um, What's going on with the receivers? What's going on with the offensive line? What's going on with Josh? Um, so knowing that he's not, you know, 100% of the problem, uh, I still got to put a, a lot, a lot on his plate there. And this was probably the worst performance I can remember in a very long time outside of like the Jets game week one. Um, and that, that was just a crazy turnover game. Um, yeah, this one just wasn't good. Um, Got to talk about Stefan Diggs here. Um, it was something that, you know, there was a few weeks in there where he started, you know, not being uh, as impactful of a player. And it was kind of, you know, other guys were stepping up, the run game stepping up, just winning in different ways. And... Um, to me, it, it really doesn't matter how it's happening. Just just get the wins. And that being said, it's it's growing pretty concerning, you know, how absent Diggs has been. Um, he had seven targets today, four receptions for 26 yards. And that's kind of been the trend recently is, you know, a lot of targets, even the receptions that he's getting aren't big yardage. Um, and it's just not very efficient play. Now I know, I know this isn't all on digs. Allen did miss, you know, digs on what would have been like a super long touchdown and it would have, you know, changed everything and digs would have been on the side of things I like today. Um, but it didn't happen. And we're so used to those two being automatic together that, if this team is going to make the postseason, if they're going to make any noise in the postseason, um, the ancillary weapons are not good enough to to not have digs being digs. Um, just plain and simple. Uh, you're just not going to win playoff games if you're not getting some sort of contribution from digs. And I know that I know the teams are game planning and they're going to scheme and they're going to do everything they can to take away digs. Um, we haven't set the team up with good enough weapons outside of digs for him to be a non-factor. Uh, despite teams doing all that to take away digs, he still has to be involved. There, there's just, it's, there's nothing else. He's, he's got to be there. Um, with some ancillary weapons, um, I, I did like the game that Kincaid and Shakir have had. Um, Kincaid, four catches on seven targets, 87 yards. Khalil Shakir continues to be the absolute model of efficiency. Four catches, four targets, 39 yards. Um, so I would love to see, you know, a little bit of an uptick in, in Shakir action out there. Um, didn't even really touch on this on things I didn't like, but a couple of guys that I'm, you know, like all the way out on. I don't need to see Sherfield getting offensive snaps anymore. Um he, he's I, I can remember more drops from him this season than like impactful plays. I'm I'm all set on him. And 
Latavius Murray, who's been somebody I've been very high on this year. I've been very excited about the role that he played for this team. Um, I don't know if he, if, if the age is like finally catching up to him towards the end of the season, but he just hasn't been effective. And, and not only has he not been effective, it's to the point where he's not even contributing anymore. So to me, I, I was when we when we added Fournette to the practice squad, I was very much to me that was Latavius Murray insurance and Latavius Murray earned that job. Um he hasn't been very productive recently in this game. He had one carry for zero yards. Um, and then one target that he didn't catch and that one went right through his hands. And, you know, when we're talking about how much the offense was struggling in this game and again, never one thing, um, but between Sherfield and Murray, I know for a fact, the Murray one at least was a first down and that would have been. You know, giving the ball, the Bills the ball somewhere around midfield and with the first down midfield, maybe that's a drive they would have finished off and kind of greased up the wheels and got moving a little bit. Um, but that is a drive that, you know, comes away with no points. And, you know, that one, despite all of Josh Allen's struggles yesterday, that one wasn't his fault. I mean, it's right on Murray's numbers. He drops it. We punt. Uh, so... Anywho, um, yeah, so to me, the, the biggest takeaways of, of things that I liked here um, was was those ancillary weapons. And then just, I know that Kincaid is emerged, and I know that Knox's role on this team is more of a blocker right now. And I know, I know that when, I know Knox is kind of a hot button um with this franchise he he's had a history of drops he's had um some ones that really stick out in the head he's been like an athletic productive tight end for this team and he doesn't have to be you know the greatest tight end ever he doesn't even have to outplay Kincaid I don't think he's at a level where he doesn't still deserve some sort of looks and maybe there's something i don't know here maybe the wrist isn't as healed up as they like maybe he's still you know struggling with that in practice and it's not like josh allen throws the softest of balls so maybe there's something there that um i'm not really aware of but when he was out we saw you know quentin johnston or quentin morris getting targets um, I, I just think that if he's going to be out there, uh, his physical abilities, the fact that he can be a little bit of an afterthought here now with Diggs on one side, Kincaid emerging, um, James Cook being a weapon in the passing game. It just seems like there's some opportunities there. Um, and then last thing, uh, Joe Brady. Uh, I think kind of like the the honeymoon phase is over and now we're into, you know, this is what everyday life is going to look like. And the last couple games haven't been good enough. And there's just got to be some adjustments there. And we, we, myself included, first couple games, offense looked back on track. Give this dude OC right now, like just make it permanent. Um, if we look back at the last couple weeks, I, I might be backtracking on that a little bit. Um, I have a little bit of grace for him in this game, just going against, you know, you just became an offensive coordinator, whatever, five weeks ago, um, trying to plan an offense around probably the greatest defensive coach of all time. I don't expect perfection. Um. Uh, but when you have a game that your defense gave you the ball back four times, they contributed a pick six. Um, you got outgained by New England having the bottom offense in the whole league. Um, 
your forty million dollar franchise quarterback, Josh Allen, uh, has less passing yards than Bailey Zappi. You only have twenty four more rushing yards than New England. It's just, it's not enough. And this is again giving some grace that you know it's a good defense. It's a good defensive coach. Um, but as we're looking forward to the next, at least next week, maybe into the postseason, there's got to be some different answers. There's got to be, you know, I, I feel like beginning of the season, Dorsey, it was, you know, forcing Diggs too much. And it was like, yeah, Diggs can have this great stat line, but we're not, you know, finishing games. Um, now it's kind of gone the other way. Like, yeah, we're winning games, but without Diggs. Yeah, we have to marry those two ideas. Um, I liked early in the game, we we forced a touch where Diggs was taking a carry out of shotgun. If that's what you got to do, some bubble screens, whatever, he needs to be involved in the game. Uh, I'll leave it at that for now on things I liked and didn't like. We're going to take a quick break, and when we jump back, we're going to talk about what lies ahead for the Bills. Stick around. Hey, this is Brother Bill. Now back to the show. Bills Mafia, welcome back in, and thank you again for joining me on this week of the Wandering Buffalo podcast. Uh, if you've made it this far, do ask that you like, share, subscribe, tell a friend. Uh, we got episodes coming out every week, so just make sure you're su subscribed, excuse me, so you're not missing anything. I want to talk a little bit about what lies ahead, and I'll just say this is probably one probably the craziest season um that i can remember as a bills fan as far as like how playoffs are shaken out and there's probably been a few more in there um throughout the years but pretty much my whole life as a bills fan we were missing the playoffs uh so it's just it's so strange to me where we're ending up right now and you know, it, it's very, very close to being a, a win and in game against Miami. Um, but we have the potential to beat Miami, win the division and be the two seed um, all the way down to if we lose to Miami and a couple games don't go our way, we could be all the way out of the playoffs. And I just don't remember it. it I don't remember like other teams having that much of a swing uh, on the table. Um, granted, for these Bills teams that we've gotten used to um, in the Josh Allen era, it's been more like, you know, are we going to finish as the one seed? Um, division was pretty much wrapped up every year. Like, can we get to the one seed? Um, so very different seat that we're in this year. Um, so we're going into a game against Miami that, I mean, I'm pretty much calling a must win. Now we did get the um, we did get the schedule fully released for next week. Um, of course, they're going to <laughs> they're making the Bills Dolphins game the night game on Sunday. So not only do we have to sit there with the anticipation all day, you know, it, it's going to go one of two ways. And either way, I'm not sleeping that Sunday. Either you know they do lose. Maybe we get knocked out of the playoffs. Maybe we squeak in as a wild card. But it, if we're losing that kind of must-win game, I'm not going to feel good anyways. So they could lose and I'm not going to sleep. Or they could win. And now we've wrapped up the division. We're going to be the two seed. And I got to buy division champs here all night. So uh, either way, I'm not sleeping. I think the, uh, for what it's worth, I think the NFL did have kind of I get wanting that game to be your marquee game for the week, um, but also by the time we're playing that game, we're going to know, you know, whether that game for the Bills is a win and end game or is it like we're just playing for division and two seed um, because all the other games are going to be settled by then. Um, granted, either way, go out there, you know, win the game get the two seed, get the division. Um, kind of the approach McDermott had this weekend of like not showing the scores inside the stadium because he didn't want it. He didn't want the team to know what's going on. Um, but yeah, that's what's at stake here. And that 
that will lead to, you know, if we get to talk about the playoffs. Um, now, it's Miami team, you know, they've been kind of the hot name in the AFC most of the year, and they're kind of starting to lose some of that shine um, as the Ravens have kind of come up and played more consistently. The Dolphins have had their struggles against some of the better teams. Um, you know, we, we needed to win yesterday, and we needed the Dolphins to lose to the Ravens, and... <laughs> It made it all that more stressful yesterday that I can look at the box scores and the Dolphins are just getting absolutely schmacked by uh, the Ravens. You know, what I was hoping our game would look like against the Patriots. I was hoping we'd look like the Ravens, but here we are. Um, and we got this, you know, one score game down to the wire against the Patriots. We've already beat you this season that are about to possibly end your season. Um, but whatever survive in advance <laughs> um but yeah miami has you know they they squeaked by dallas they've had some of their struggles um i as the game ended yesterday it flipped over to the dolphins game i see um bradley chubb getting carted off you know not here celebrating injuries by any means i'm um, just kind of pointing out they're they're getting a little banged up um Jalen Waddle missed that game with a high ankle sprain. Tyreek Hill's been kind of dealing with something. Mostert wasn't able to go that game. Um, just, you know, some injuries he's been dealing with. Uh, knee, ankles, they were kind of resting him up. Um, so who knows, you know, how depleted that Miami team is going to be. Um, they're already, you know, missing some pieces on the offensive line. Things are setting up that this should be should be the game game the bills go in take care of business and despite it not looking pretty all the time or you know the way we envisioned it you know josh allen throwing for 350 yards and four touchdowns and we're smacking teams um when you when you look at the end of the season here and the possibility to head into the playoffs like winning but I believe it's four or five, you know, finishing out the season strong. Being in a position all year that you left yourself no room for error. And honestly, the fact that they've dug themselves out of this hole to be in this position, it, it this is kind of like the perfect embodiment of this season where like the Bills could win and have everything in front of them or they could lose and it there it'd be their fault and be knocked out of the playoffs completely and honestly i i think <laughs> i think either path is justified earned at this point i mean kudos to them real happy with where we ended up from the hole that we've dug ourselves some of the terrible losses that we took to be completely written off you know halfway through the season to we're in the conversation for number two seed winning the division again um, five consecutive years um, to me that's just like the added fuel to to finish this season off to get that one more done like you didn't put in all this work to to be back in the conversation to just fall flat against the Miami team um, obviously a team that we put a pretty good beat down on earlier in the season. They're not going to forget that. Um, they want to win that division too. We've been, you know, the big brother giving noogies in this uh, division for quite some time. And it's right there in front of them too. And they, they want to kind of prove that what we saw earlier in the season is more who this team is than what we've seen a little bit recently. So we're, we're going to get Miami's best shot and hopefully Hopefully, we come ready to play on both sides of the ball. Um, something that's happened a lot of times in this season is defense is having a bad game, but the offense is stellar. The offense, you know, sucks, but the defense is having a great game. Um, if we can put <laughs> both sides of the ball having a good game together on a day, um, that's a very dangerous team. Um, 
if we could see that just, you know, for five more games, we're going to have a real happy February. Um, but like I said, we're, we're in playoff mode now. It's survive, survive in advance now. Um, even if you, even if you get the games going your way in the early slots next Sunday, um, go beat that Miami team, go take the division, head into the playoffs, you know, with a full head of steam and not limping in, um, and go take care of business. And that's it for right now. Um, we're going to be back next week talking about that Bills Dolphins game and hopefully, you know, start playing out playoff matchups and where we go from here. Uh, but thank you for joining me on this week's episode. Again, Happy New Year's uh, to you and your families. And as always, go Bills. Go Bills.